Hey, what's up and welcome back to another Laramie Lair tutorial. Today, I wanna to show you how I built these 3D printed Lego pieces. Uh, these are little Lego compatible pieces that uh, are designed to fit over my desktop monitor so that they can kind of rest on top of the monitor and I can just kind of put my Lego minifigs or whatever on top. It's a pretty neat little project, um, but it's really cool because it's parametric. So this is a really good example of using user parameters to drive this design. So let's say we wanna come in here and change the number of studs. Let's say I want a two by eight. So I come in here and just update this one value, hit enter, and this automatically updates. So that's really cool. I could also go the other way. Let's say I wanted to make a four by eight. I can do it that way as well, which is really cool. So you can make this as big or as small as you want. And another thing is that you'll notice that I have this sort of a lightning bolt uh, in the center there. And when I ever update the number going horizontally, you'll see that the lightning bolt uh, stays centered with the design. So I'll show you guys how to do that. And another thing is, of course, uh, the center cut over here that's kind of going through the whole brick. Um, this is, um, I have two of them because one is for a desktop iMac. And this red one over here is uh, for a thin one. This is for uh, more of like a laptop monitor. And it's a little bit different. It's got like a curve here. Um, but it's all uh, being driven with the pretty much the same uh, parameters. So I can come in here and change it and they both get changed. So it's really cool. Uh, so let me show you guys how I built this. So I'm going to make a new document. And sometimes when you have a new document, it's like completely blank and you don't know what's going on. One thing I like to do is I like to turn on the grid. So under this icon, there's the layout grid. So I'll make sure that's turned on. So now I can kind of revolve around here and get a good idea of where I am in space. So the first thing I'll do is I'll open up my user parameter window. You can find that under the modify. Uh, and I'll add a new a new one by clicking that plus button. Let's name this one the brick. And this is going to be our unit that's kind of the brick unit. So for this case, it's going to be eight millimeters. And I'll hit OK. Let's go ahead and look at Google Images. And if you search for Lego brick dimensions, you're going to find a bunch of different images. Um, they're pretty much all the same. Some of them differ slightly here and there. Um, so you can uh, pick whichever one you'd like. Um, but I'm using um, this one here, which is just fine. So you see that the distance between studs is actually eight millimeters. Uh, so that's why I'm using that as my uh, as my unit of brick. And you'll see how high the brick is. You can change that as well, how tall the studs are. So you can make this as kind of uh, user parameter driven as you'd like, but I'm just gonna work with just a few of them. So I got brick. I'm gonna make one called height, which is gonna be the height of our brick. That was 9.6. So I'm gonna come in here and type that in. 9.6. Let's go ahead and make another one. Let's make this the stud. The stud's going to be five millimeters. And then the next ones I'm going to make is actually a number count. This number count isn't necessarily a unit of measurement. So we need to tell, we need to specify that this does not have a unit. So you can come over here where it says unit millimeters. You can just change that to no units. And what, I'm gonna, what I want to do is I want to say, I want it to be vertically, like how many uh, studs uh, do you want vertically? So instead of typing out vertical, I'm just gonna say vert to kind of abbreviate that. So uh, it's vertically, I kind of want it to be eight across. And then horizontally, I'll just kind of type in the words like that. And then what I'll do is I'll say I only want two um, on the width going horizontally. Oops, and you'll see that I, I made that. Um, you can't change it, so you have to kind of make a new one. So I'll delete that, make a new one. First thing is change it to no units. Put horizontal, and then I'll make it uh, two. So now we got uh, just about all the things we need. We got the brick, the height of the brick, the stud diameter, vertical, horizontal. That should be everything we need. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new component. Uh, so right here, right click, new component. Let's call this brick. Uh, this is my first brick, so I'll just call it brick A. You'll see that it's uh, activated there, which is what we want. Now I'm gonna bring out the create sketch and I'm gonna draw it on this flat plane here. So I'm kind of working face down. So I'll hit the top there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a rectangle. So I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle. I'm gonna start from the center point and then just kind of drag it out there. I don't have any dimensions yet because it doesn't matter because we're gonna drive this, uh, the dimensions here. I'm gonna grab this one at the bottom and I'll hit the D uh, key on my keyboard for the uh, dimensions. I'll click there and then what I wanna do is basically I want this to be the, the brick. Uh, that's the brick unit. And I wanna multiply that by the vertical, um, by the vertical uh, number that we have. So when I hit that, you'll see that it's uh, 64. Okay. Next thing I'll do is I'll select that and then I will change, I'll make this uh, also brick, multiply that by the horizontal value, right? So we get um, two. 
So there you go. I kind of want to, so we could play with this now. If I open up the chains parameter, I, I, I could set this to four and you'll see that it updates to 32 uh, millimeters across, which is what we want. So it's a little bit less. So it looks good. I'll hit stop sketch. And what I'll do is I'll select this as a profile and then I'll extrude this. Uh, and then instead of uh, adding a number here, I'll just type in uh, the height, which is the height of a brick. And I'll hit okay. So that's pretty much uh, kind of the base that we want to work off of. Next thing I want to do is make the studs. So to make the studs, I'm going to click on the top surface of this brick, and then I'll create a new sketch right on top of it. It automatically gets projected into its own sketch. So what I'll do is I'll uh, use the circle tool to kind of create a stud, and the diameter of the stud is just going to be STUD, which is our user parameter. STUD, enter, enter again, it locks it, click it in there. Okay, so now I have my, my, my circle stud. Uh, I, 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 want, I need to move this in the right position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, I, I want this to be a certain distance uh, from uh, this ledge over here. So I want this to be brick divided by 2, and that will give me 4. I'll do the same thing uh, but for the opposite end. So this will be um, this one over here. So this, again, is going to be brick divided by 2, and that gives me 4. So now we have that. So now we have this fully constrained stud circle. It won't move anywhere because it's got these dimensions locked to it. So I'll hit OK, stop sketch. And then what I'll do is to select that as a profile and extrude it. Uh, the stud, I believe, is 1.8 millimeters tall. It could be bigger or smaller. You could drive that with another user parameter if you'd like, but I'm just going to skip that for now. I think we have enough. After that, now I have my first stud. Then the trick here is to actually use the pattern, uh, a pattern feature to patternize this and use those user parameters to drive the pattern. So I'll bring up my, models, uh, my model toolbox and I'll type in uh, pattern. I want to use the rectangular pattern. Now the pattern type should be set to the feature uh, and this will allow me to select an object. Instead of selecting an object here, I'll select this, uh, this guy here which is our extrude uh, feature that we made uh, the stud out of. Then what I'll do is I'll select directions and I'll just kind of select this guy over here. I'll bring this out here, and then I'll bring this out slightly just to kind of get a visual. You can kind of see there's a ghosted out icon view of, of the studs. And what I'll do now is um, for this quantity here, I'm going to type in um, the, I believe it's vertical, so or maybe it's horizontal. We can switch them around if we'd like. Uh, but I'm going to start with horizontal, and then uh, for the distance type, make sure it's set to spacing. You want it to be the even amount of spacing between, the, between all the studs. And then the spacing itself is just going to be brick. And then I think the next one is over here. So I'm going to make this the vertical. And then over here, the distance for that will also be brick. And you can see I got it backwards, right? I got it backwards. So I need to switch horizontal to vertical and vice versa. So let me do that real quick. Horizontal. OK, so that's looking pretty good. They're evenly spaced out with the distance of brick, which is our uh, unit of measurement. I'll hit OK, and that'll append them all. So now we have a solid body. So if we open up our uh, browser view, you can see it's just one body, which is what we want. We want this to be a, a fully uh, manifold item that can be 3D printed. It's watertight, so there's no holes in it or anything. So that's pretty much it. So now we can start playing with our brick and seeing if it, if it works with the parameters as expected. So I'll say, let's say I want 8 instead of 4. Let's say I want 4 instead of 2. And you can see it's working pretty well. So I'll go ahead and switch these back to smaller units. And if you wanted to make this uh, taller or smaller, accommodate for 3D printing, you can change the studs and everything. Let's say we want an accurate stud. Maybe we're printing on an on a, on a SLA printer that's more accurate. I could put 4.8, for example, or put 5. You know, so that works really well. OK, so then the next thing I want to show you is how to create features that are kind of uh, parametric that can grow with it. So for example, I want to cut that. I want to cut this here. I want to make like an arc here so that I can cut through this and all the way through here. So what I'll do is I'm going to you got to start off with the with the with the surface that makes sense. So if we go all the way back to the very beginning sketch, you'll see that I am pretty much constrained here. Whenever this unit grows, this is what grows. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to use this uh, surface here. Uh, to create my cut. So I'm going to select that surface. I'll make a sketch here. And then what I'll do is I'll create my kind of uh, my cutout with uh, the line tool. So bring out my line tool. Um, and it really depends on your monitor. So if you have a very specific monitor size, this is where you would want to kind of do it. But it's basically something like this. Um, you can add dimensions here to whatever you want. Let's say you want a minimum wall thickness here for the top and the front. 
maybe two millimeters. And then I believe what I did is I added a uh, dimension here, uh, an angle so that I can have like a precise angle. Um, and I did it that way. So now let's say we have this set to exactly how we want our monitor. And what I'll do is I'll uh, use the extrude command and then I will use the extent. I'll change that to object and then select this surface over here. And that way uh, it creates this dynamic relationship where if I ever update the vertical number, um, this cut will just kind of grow with it. So let's test that out. I'll bring out the, uh, the parameter window and change this value to eight. You see that it grows and the cut goes with it. And the cut goes with it because when we, when we look at our extrusion, it's using the to object extent. And that is parametrics is saying whenever this object moves, just go with it. So that's kind of a neat, neat thing there. Let's go ahead and change that back. And the next thing I want to show you guys is how I created uh, that feature in the center here. So let's say we want uh, some sort of logo or maybe a cutout of some sort, an extrusion, anything like that. So uh, this is the front. As you can see, that's the front facing view. So with that selected, I'll create a new sketch. And what I'll do is I'm just going to make a circle, just kind of make this easy. Uh, at this point, it doesn't matter where I draw the circle. So somewhere over here, let's say I want it to be like uh, five millimeters. And what I'll do is I want this to be in the center somewhere here. I don't know where the center of this is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the line tool to create kind of a reference point. So I'll bring up my line tool and I'll roll over this edge here until I get this kind of triangle. Then I'll click because that is kind of the center of it. Um, it's actually not where I want it to be. It's actually more over here. That's why I like to revolve. So over there, then we come down here until I hit that midpoint. And now I have this line that kind of cuts these two. It intersects this, this, uh, this whole profile. So what I'll do is I'll select the line and then hit the X key on my keyboard to make that into a construction line. That way it, it won't intersect uh, this, this surface here. So now what I can do is I can select this circle. I'll hold down Shift and I'll select that line. Then in my constraints menu, I'll select midpoint. Silence. Let's do it again. Select here, select there, midpoint. All right, that's not working. So let's select the center dot and then the line and then midpoint. Sorry about that. So now we have this, now we have this circle that's midpoint constrained to the midpoint of this, which is constrained to the midpoint of this. So that's really cool. So if we, if we update our, uh, our user parameter, if we change this to two, you'll see that the circle updates with it. So that's working really well. I'll hit okay. And um, what I'll do is I'll hit stop sketch. Let's say you wanted to make this uh, an extrusion. So with that selected, I'll bring out my extrude tool. Maybe go negative, kind of go inwards. You kind of get fancy and add some chamfers and stuff like that to give this more. Maybe this is like a cutout for a camera. So maybe you want to add a lens to your camera. Your, maybe your webcam is right on top of your camera or something. So that'd be kind of neat. Again, let's test it out and make sure that it is uh, kind of moving with where we want it to. Yep, seems to be still working, so that's good. So obviously there's a lot of different things you can do. You can make this fully parametric. You can make all the little heights and whatever um, uh, parametric as you want. And if we go back over here, you'll notice that uh, I, I added quite a few things. I added some uh, some fillets here on the edges to kind of smooth it out. Um, this is uh, actually set up for a dual extrusion 3D printer. That's why this is a, a, a separate piece. Uh, or you can print it in pieces and snap them together if you want. Um, but you'll see that I have two of them set up um, using the same parameters. That way, uh, if I want to change one, I can change the other one. Um, so there's a lot of different things you could do. If you wanted to make a super accurate Lego, I'll, I'll, let you, uh, I'll have a link down in the description of another video that, that walks you through how to make a really precise Lego, fully parametric, again, in Fusion 360. Very, very good tutorial. I definitely recommend checking it out. If you guys have any questions or any uh, tips, please let, them, please let me know uh, in the comments below. It'll help me out and, of course, other people. That's going to be it for me today. I'll see you guys in the next one.